All right, so we're gonna veer slightly away from the grocery store and we're gonna talk about impulse purchases in restaurants and some of the ways I see how that affects my coaching clients and some things for you to keep a lookout for. So number one, not only do you get this urge to do impulse purchases in the grocery store, but you will also feel that same temptation at restaurants because your lower brain will make suggestions like, okay, we may never get to this restaurant again, or, oh my gosh, today's an off day because we have no clue how many calories are in any of this food, so we might as well fully enjoy ourselves and worry about it tomorrow, right? So it's kind of like checking out of the process, treating this like it's some kind of weird special event that's never gonna happen again, and or creating a sense of scarcity about the fact that this opportunity may not happen again. And then what I often see for many of my clients and where they struggle is they don't really make a very solid plan going into it because that that feels like everything seems nebulous and they're not sure how to handle it. And what happens is they want to take part of all the things. So the very first thing I really work with my coaching clients on is letting go of that scarcity mentality when it comes to food. And reminding yourself that unless you're in like a foreign country and you truly never will get back there again, you can come back to this restaurant. Like this idea of these restaurants, you know, I can only go on my anniversary. Why? Why can you not go any other time of the year, right? It's a story you've created that creates the feeling of scarcity, but you don't have to believe that story. You could actually believe the story. I can come to this restaurant whenever I want, or I could even do takeout from this restaurant and try these different things. Like this is an abundance, not a scarcity situation, right? Number two, when you're there, have a plan. So, and make it a realistic plan. So you don't wanna go in with the, I don't have a plan because I have no idea how many calories or what I'm gonna order. So thus, you know, you, I can have and do whatever I want, but you also don't wanna go with a super restrictive plan. You might say, okay, I know I'm gonna wanna have at least two alcoholic beverages. And I know I'm gonna at least have one plate of food. And maybe I know that I like to have some bread and butter. So I'm gonna have two slices of bread and butter. And maybe I know I'm gonna have a dessert. And you write all that down on your paper pencil journal or you pre-log all of that. You can always delete what you don't eat, but you give yourself permission to have and try different things, but you put boundaries on it, right? So that way there's no scarcity because you can come to this restaurant whenever. You're getting to have these things and enjoy them, but there is limitations, right? We're, we're not just gonna go crazy with it. Now, where I also see there being a little bit of an issue at restaurants is the, the financial cost sunk fallacy kind of concept where I bought this thing, so now I have to eat it all, right? But I wanna make the point that one, chances are if you've been on this weight loss process for 10, 20, 30 years of your life, you've spent a lot of money on things that ended up getting thrown away or not used or memberships that you didn't use, all this stuff. So if you bought this $20 whatever and you only ate half of it, you, you got your money's worth. <laughs> you, you ate your meal, right? It was just a more expensive meal, but you don't need to keep eating because you're not getting any of that money back, right? So if you think about it like my weight loss and the time I invest into my weight management is an investment of my time and money, and I want to be a good steward of my time and money, then overeating just because something was expensive on a menu makes no sense whatsoever, right? Package it up, take it home. It could be another day's meal or allow it to go and just say, hey, I've invested way more than this on myself over the years trying to pursue this. Letting go of a $10 half eaten entree, not the end of the world, right? So just want to highlight lower brain scarcity, uncertainty creates overeating at restaurants, but it doesn't have to. Having the right mindset going in, having a realistic plan that's not restrictive, not overly permissive, and knowing that just because you paid for something doesn't mean you have to eat the whole thing, or at least not eat the whole thing in that one sitting. You can bring it home, and when your mind says, oh my gosh, this is the only chance, the only opportunity, no, I can always come back to this restaurant. I could choose to take myself out one day and actually order something just by myself. I don't even have to make this a big deal. All right, I hope this helps. You have a great day and I'll be back with more how my purchases and buying of food 
leads to overeating. All right, I'll talk to you soon.